Man, I am sorry that I am late. Uh, you know, this and this happens. This happened a few a, a few times. You know, when I go to uh, uh, go live, it'll throw like this new uh, thing. It's like every time, I, almost every time I do it, it throws like this new thing that I have to do, like this new information, or I gotta make like some sort of new download or something like this. Like, what? I didn't have to do this last week. It's like just when I get used to one thing and I'm ready to go to do the one thing, it hits me with another thing that I have to do in order to 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 go live. So this was on YouTube. So people probably on YouTube. I hope I'm, it's usually not a lot of people. I only only a few people hang out with me on these things. But uh, unfortunately, like there might be a few people on YouTube. Like, dude, where's Zoe? It's like, well, I couldn't get on because it was this whole new thing that I had to do. And uh, so it just like I said, it's like some new thing, like almost every week that I have to do in order to get on. Uh, but so I'm over here on Facebook now, and I think one of the reasons why I was having a problem with the Facebook thing was because I was trying to do two at the, two at the same time. At the same time! I was trying to do uh, two channels. I was trying to do YouTube and I was trying to do Facebook and the feed, it just wasn't stable enough to be able to do it. So um, now I'm doing one at a time, I'm doing Facebook. It looks like it's holding up okay. So I'll probably be doing Facebook for a little bit because YouTube just keeps throwing too many flipping demands at me in order to, for me to get it on and it's really frustrating. All right. So anyway. Can you dig it, sinners? Can you dig it? Can you dig it? Can you dig it? Man, I remember when we, um, like uh, when, uh, when my dude uh, Eli was in the band, man, he would do that. He did it pretty well. And, uh, <laughs> and uh, man, I tell you what, it's like I, I, I miss having him in the band because he was a super sweet guy. He's like one of the nicest people that you'll ever meet, ever meet. Just really couldn't get him to do what he did on the album live. And it's like, Eli, you got to work on that. He's like, yeah, man. And, you know, he's like, all right. Anyway, anyway, anyway hated, hated to have, have to let him go. Miss, miss the guy. Good dude, though. Um, anyway, um, let's see. Man, you know, I'm thinking one of the reasons... Well, and y'all keep a twenty pound and twenty pound sledge in prayer for uh, you know for the for the right singer to come uh, uh, and help me uh, uh, get this thing back to the stage. Um, look here, I'm thinking one of the reasons why uh, you know I think uh, the the prince of the power of the air didn't want me to to come on, and I was just man, he's like man, I don't, I don't want you to say that. I don't want you to say. That. I don't want people to know, right? Um, Cause I've been I've been having some dialogues. I've been getting a, a couple of emails now and then uh, of people wanting to dialogue with me to uh, not just to ask me questions, but to like convert me. You know, now this this happens. This happens, but sometimes you know it just kind of comes to a head. And uh, you know, I'm just I'm just feeling the need to talk about it. I want you know before we go ahead and get into our Bible trip, man. I want to talk about this over It's like, man, I know this is gonna get me into some trouble. This is gonna get me into some trouble, y'all. Some people are gonna be mad at me. They're going to be mad at me for saying this, man. But, you know, if, you, if you're going to try to, you know, for those who maybe this, because, you know, I love, I love my, my, my Mormon homies, right? You know, I love you. And, uh, and, and my Catholics, I know I got some Catholics who be listening to, you know, I love y'all. I love y'all. And if I, and if I love you, I'm going to tell you the truth, or at least you may not think it's the truth, but how about this? I will tell you what I honestly think. How about that? All right. Now I am not, uh, if anybody asks, you know, what, what denomination are you? I'm, I'm not one. I'm not a denomination. I'm not a Baptist. I'm not a Presbyterian. I'm not a Methodist. You know, I'm not any of those things. I'm Biblican. All right. That, if, it, if I'm a denomination, a denomination of anything, that's what I am. I'm Biblican. That's it. So uh, um, that being said, you know, for those who are, are, are going to pitch to me about like, you know, whether it's, uh, I've had, you know, some Mormons coming at me. You know, uh, basically trying to sell Mormonism on me. I'm like, look, look here. And and one of the things that they'll try to use is that you know that there's uh, there's this ex this this addition, right? And a bunch of people. It's like many people are coming over to Mormonism. Atheists are coming to Mormonism. Christians are leaving the church and becoming Mormon. And I'm like, that's not a good sell for me. Just because somebody is is you have these flocks of people coming over to Mormonism, that's that's not a good sell for me. That's basically what you're telling me is that you got there's a bunch of lemmings that are kind of like running off a cliff. Hey, that's that's what you're telling me. So I'm not, I'm not impressed by a whole bunch of people coming over to Mormonism. Hey, uh, and the idea that and it's like the thing is, well, the, you know, when you read it, when they're saying when you read the Bible, hey, and uh, the Bible is telling you know it, it, they use the Bible to validate the Book of Mormon. 
And see, that doesn't add up to me. I'm like, well, if you're going to use the Bible, why, why, do you, why do you rely on the Bible to validate the Book of Mormon? If the Bible is the measure that you use to validate your book, why not just go by the validator? Why is the Bible not enough for you? Are you meaning to tell me that God, who knows the end from the beginning, forgot and said, oh, snap, hey, Mormon, can you do me a favor? Uh, look, man, I, I, I left out a scripture. Can you run down and deliver one to me? It's like, no, the word is this. The Bible is the complete word of God. And you have to be able to trust that. If you do not trust that the Bible is the complete word of God, where you need another scripture to add to what God said, then I'm not really sure that you're trusting in the word of God. Amen. Yep. That doesn't work. You have to trust it in order to meet the canon. The full word of God has to meet up with, it has to be historically correct. It has to apply to all generations. And it has to be culturally uh, uh, receivable. Eh? It has, any, any, any culture can grasp the Bible. Any culture can. Of course, you're going to have some that don't. Eh? But it has to speak to any culture. It has to speak to all generations. God is timeless. He's from me. You think, you think he didn't know that we were coming? You didn't, you didn't think that he would know that this generation would be here, this later generation? He didn't think he knew about us? You don't think that he didn't include his full word to even apply to us? Y'all, if anybody died before the Book of Mormon was written, where you needed another testament to understand the, the, the salvation of the Lord, then that would God be being unjust. Because that means that other generations have died and gone to hell before they knew the complete word. That would be an unjust God. God's word is complete. You have to trust that. If you don't trust that, then you're not really believing Jesus. You mean to tell me that Jesus went up there, got up on that cross, had his nails, had his hands dug in their nails and said, oh, snap, wait a minute, wait a minute. My hands are nailed down. Hold on, I need a pen because I need to write down another scripture. No, he got up there and he said, it's finished. It's done. Ain't nothing you can add to it. Right? So what you're telling me is that God is too absent-minded to know that he's delivered his complete word. And you're using the Bible itself to try to validate something else. Why do you use the Bible? Because the Bible is the measure. So why not just trust the measure? All right? Now, uh, and, and we can go on, in, on this for days. Right? And of course, you know, if Mormons, you know I ain't trying to offend you. You know I love you. It's like, that's why I'm telling you the truth. I ain't trying to love you straight to hell. I'm going to tell you the truth. Hey, so... Uh, and, you know, and then, I've, of course, I've got some, um, uh, and like I said, we can go on this for, for, for days. You know, this, this, this conversation has been decades and generations and, 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 and forever, for, for a long time anyway. Right? So it's probably going to keep on going until Jesus comes and sets the record straight. And unfortunately, even when Jesus does come and set the record straight, some people still don't deny what Jesus said. Hey, that's just go, that's just the way it's going to be. That's unfortunate. And I, if you're listening, I don't want you to be one of those people. Hey, I don't want to be one of those people. Um, and then of course, you know, and I'm, and for, for, for the Catholics, my Catholic homies, you know, I got some, you know, uh, hit me up and, uh, wanted to, you know, lecture me about the rapture, you know, as you know, and I've, I've had some, I've had some Catholics that were mean about it. You know, they think it's ridiculous, this whole rapture idea and that the Bible doesn't say anything about it. The Bible doesn't say anything about the rapture. I'm like, okay, wait a minute. Is that your argument to say that there's no such thing as a rapture? Well, one that's wrong, but by that so-called logic that the Bible doesn't say anything about the rapture. Well, the Bible doesn't say, the Bible doesn't use the word abortion specifically either. Are we supposed to assume that abortion is not wrong because the Bible doesn't use that word specifically? The Bible doesn't use words like transgender. It doesn't use words like transsexual or transvestite. But I can assure you that the complete word of God lets you know that those who do this will not inherit the kingdom of heaven. Eh? The Bible also does not use words like transubstantiation, but that doesn't stop Catholics from doing it. I think it's also very strange when you have those who are, who are Catholics who say that the rest of the Bible is allegorical. It's just a bunch of stories, right? These, these are stories. It's like, how do you believe that these are stories and these are allegories, but you actually believe that the body of Jesus manifests in your body when you eat bread? Now, come on now. You know, so now as far as the rapture goes, the, uh, uh, to, to send the argument to me that there is no rapture, this is a concept that was just made up in the 1800s. This is 
absolutely false, guys. The concept of the rapture only came up in the 1800s? It came up in the Old Testament. I beg to differ. That concept has been since the Old Testament, baby. Enoch, right? Now, when it, when it says that Enoch was taken, y'all, the rapture is the English equivalent to the Hebrew term laukuk. Hey, Enoch wasn't just like standing there and all of a sudden windows of heaven opened up and God said, Enoch, come walk into the kingdom. And Enoch just kind of strolled up into the kingdom slowly. No, Enoch experienced Laukuk. And the word Laukuk means that he was snatched northward in a flash quickly. Hey, that's how Enoch was taken into heaven. It's like God opened up heaven and said, Enoch. What's up, bro? Get your eye on. Get up here, boy. You my dude, Enoch. I like you. Hey, Enoch was snatched into heaven quickly. Hey, in a flash. That is how the word Lauka breaks down. The concept of the rapture has been here. All right? Now, just because people are waking up finally to what it means, that don't mean that the concept hadn't already been here. All right? Enoch was Lauka. There was a judge, was, was, was raptured. Hey, splashed away very quickly. So now we can look at the pattern of God and see what he does with Enoch. There was a judgment coming and Enoch was removed from the judgment. Eh? Noah was and his family removed from the judgment. Lot and his family removed before the judgment that the Israelites passed through the Red Sea and removed from when the Red Sea came back in. We can see that there is a pattern of God who removes the obedient before he pours out his judgment. This, this is no uh, a theory. This is no uh, a thing that we Christians kind of like put together to make ourselves feel better or, or some sort of escape uh, ideal. It's like, well, you know what? If Jesus Christ is our savior. What is wrong with thinking that? Yes, he's going to save us from judgment. Come on now. Yes, we do want to escape the wrath of God. Yeah, I think if you're smart, you want to do that. I don't want to be on the business end of God's wrath. Heck yeah, I want to be pulled away from here before he throws down. What's wrong with you? So no, if, if anybody who doesn't believe in the rapture, I mean, yo, that's on you. I mean, you know, I hope you do your studies, but I'd be studying the Bible. I don't look in extra, extra biblical books. I read the word because I trust the word. I trust the word of God. I don't do I don't do the apocrypha. I don't do extra biblical writings. I don't do that. I don't look for some other additional writing because I trust God. I trust God to know us and he knows every generation and what we need to understand. Hmm. Okay? I hope you know, I hope I hope I'm not like I said, I hope you guys are more receptive than offended by what I'm saying. You know, I'm only saying this in love. It's tough love. It's tough love, but you know, my 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 objective is to tell y'all the truth. Um, what's up, Kimberly Michelle? How you doing? <laughs> I think I got. I think I got. I think I got me a witness. <laughs> hey, and uh, oh, really quick, guys, and and forgive me for a little bit of solicitation. You know, you know, we Christians need to represent the culture. You know, sci-fi is big in the cultures, and it's being used to sell you know liberal, godless propaganda. So I hope you guys check out my my book. I just put it up, the the Flood Chronicles. Right? Science fiction from a Christian conservative angle. I hope you support. Go check it out on my website, alfonsorachel.com. Blessings to you. Blessings to you. Hey. All right. Now, let's, uh, let's get into this Old Testament Thursday. So what do we got? Where are we at? We are in Abraham. Uh-oh. Abraham. <laughs> my aunt, Abraham. What's up, Abraham? That's, that's my dude right there. Okay. So let's see. Where are we at? We're 12. Was it 12? Yes. 12, right? Okay, you know, you know, I can't count. All right. Okay, okay. That's that CJ back there helping me count. Yes. <laughs> okay. You know, you know the Lord said that the man need help. That's why he made woman. Carrie, get in there and help your man count to 12. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Holly, if you remember that. Where are my folks who remember that? Now, was that Electric Company or Sesame Street? You know, back, back then before they totally messed our minds up with, with, uh, with, the, with the liberal stuff like that. Back when Ernie and Bert was like Ernie and Bert instead of like uh, uh, 
or Nita and Bertha. Did I don't you know. watch Romper Room too? Romper I did, but I used to ditch school for Romper Room. Oh I'm serious. I was like, I'm playing hooky. I'm watching Romper Room. My mom go to work. I tip off like I'm going to school. Oh my god! Jump back over that wall, go in there, I put on me some Romper Room. Well, at least you didn't get brainwashed by the schools. <laughs> And that was the redeeming value of ditching school. I did not get brainwashed by the public school system. Okay? But, uh, yeah, yeah, I, I did that. Yes, I do remember Romper Room. Okay, uh, so let's see. 12, we got Genesis 12. Then Adonai said to Abram, get going out from your land and from your relatives. <laughs> you need to get away from your relatives, man. Get away from your relatives and from your father's house. Abraham, you grown, dude. What are you like now, 50? Boy, get your mind out of your daddy's house, dude. Take your go, go on somewhere. Okay, so let's see. Get on from your father's house to the land that I will show you. My heart's desire is to make you into a great nation, to bless you, to make your name great so that you may be a blessing. Wow. I will bless those who bless you, but whoever curses you, I will curse. And in you, all the families of the earth will be blessed. Okay, now how is this going to be accomplished? Abraham, all right? Abraham is a serious mag daddy. All right, he is, he is a key figure. Okay, He's this, this, is this, this is a super Shemite right here. Okay, and from here, because of his faith, he is going to, he's, he's basically like the chosen one. He's chosen to be the ancestors, like this pillar, this prime this integral ancestor, ancestral pillar that Jesus is going to come through. Abraham himself is not the reconciler. Abraham himself is not the one where all nations are going to be blessed. Through him, through him, the blessing comes. This is and don't get me wrong, y'all, because this is no way, no way demeans the importance of Abraham. That's not what I'm saying. Please don't misunderstand that. Hey, what I'm saying is because of the 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 uh, this act of faith that Abraham is going to demonstrate, this ch this choosing that God has put on Abraham is what's going to bring about the blessing that is going to come on all of us. This no longer will the Jews be the chosen people. The Jews are not going to be replaced. They're not going to be replaced. This is going to be an addition to the family. Eh? The Gentiles, eh? we get grafted in because it says, and in you, all the families of the earth will be blessed and in you a eh, what is in abraham the seed a eh, it's not abraham who reconciles all the families to god it's who comes through abraham and that's going to be jesus christ a eh, who before abraham has always been all right so that's what this is telling you i will bless those who bless you and we are talking about israel but we're looking deeper and saying we're talking about Jesus. Those who bless Jesus, king of the Jews, those who bless Jesus, God will bless. Those who curse Jesus, God will curse. Eh? So this right here, right here, this is prophetic. He's talking about Israel. You don't go, don't go against Israel. Eh? Don't curse Israel. Make sure that you bless. You stand up, you, you stand up for the Jews. Eh? You stand up for Israel. Eh? Now, of course, you have your secular Jews. I don't know about it. It's like, look, Jews, I'm warning you guys. Like, you, don't, you guys don't want to be apart from God. Hey, we're talking about Israel, right? The state, state of Israel, and those who, have, who, who are, you know, I know that, that, that you know, their, their heart isn't wandered away from God. They haven't quite understood who the Messiah is yet. But they're, they're, trying, they're trying to keep their heart on God, hey? And this state, this state needs to represent that, and you want to bless that state, hey? Um... But whoever curses you, I will curse. And in you, all the families, all the families of the earth will be blessed. All right. So Abram went just as Adonai. Oh, that's another thing I wanted to say too, y'all, is, is uh, uh, really quick. Notice that, you know, if you guys have been hang hanging in with me for a little while, the Bi Bible tripping is, is, is based on, right? It's, we're tripping out on the mind-blowing word of God. But notice we read it chapter by chapter verse by verse hey let nobody ever accuse us that we haven't read this thing and that's what people will try to do they'll try to come in and say well obviously you haven't read this verse it's like no 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 no. actually we have read that verse and more importantly we've read the whole bible so we don't take these verses out of context to fit 
our worldview. That is what this Bible trip is all about. You and me, baby, we in here fellowshipping and reading this thing, and we got it on record that we say, anybody try to say, no, what you mean you didn't read the Bible? Yes, we did. We be reading. We get together. We get together in this fellowship, and we read this thing. We're not reading catechism. We're not reading the, the Quran. We're not reading any other book or any other, other, uh, uh, other apocryphal doctrine or any non-canonical doctrine. We're reading the Word of God, chapter by chapter, verse by verse, right? Do we, I, I, can I guarantee that we absolutely understand it correctly? No, no. I do know this. I know that God didn't give us this book just so it would be a mystery to us. That'd be kind of, that'd be kind of strange, you know? No, he gave us this book because he wants us to know him. And we read this book, eh? Let there be no excuse. Let nobody able to be able to charge us with, with saying you haven't read the Bible. Oh, yes, we have. Any of them verses that you guys try to cherry pick and throw at us? No. We may not know the Bible by heart. Hey, that's, a, that's, a, that's a lot of memory. <laughs> Some people are pretty good with that and you know, who've studied the Bible for a while. But nobody be able to accuse us of saying we haven't read this thing. Hey. All right. So anyway, we got it on video. It's on video. It's on YouTube. Hey, we read this thing. Okay. So Abram went just as Adonai had spoken to him. Also, Lot went with him. Now, Abram was 75 years old, right? Abram, you're 75 years old, man. What you doing living in the church? No, sir. no, he was like, I don't know. I don't, he, was, he was an old dude. Okay? Uh, get out of your daddy's house, man. All right. And when he departed from Haran, departed from Haran, Abram took Sarai, his wife, okay? and Lot, his nephew, and all their possessions that they had acquired and the people that they acquired in Haran. What's up? I see some. Well, you just blanked out on my screen. I don't know ah. if it's my computer or if it's Facebook. Do y'all, hold on really quick. Technical, technical check. Can y'all still see me? I don't know if you can. I'll spend about just a couple seconds on this. Just mess, somebody said just messing with me. What is, what's me? Are you messing with me or is Facebook messing with me? Okay, they say you see me. All right, good, good, good. Okay, so let's keep on going. All right. So, um, Abram took Sarai, his wife. I'm going to find out. This, 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 this is going to get a little. Oh, uh, once again, um, um, before I get there, if you got some, you know, some childrens in, in uh, uh, you know, listening, uh, this may get a little, you know, PG 13 ish. Right, just you know, just just a heads up. You know I'm gonna you know I'm gonna try to keep it. I'm gonna try to keep it. You know uh, uh, I'm gonna try to keep it grade school with the language. Wait a minute, that's not a good thing because grade school kids be cursing like, yeah, <laughs> right. So, but you know what I'm saying. I'm I'm, I'm gonna try. I'm gonna keep it. Try to keep it pretty homogenized. All right. Um. So let's see. So by the, by, the, by the time I start getting into uh, uh yeah yeah by, about uh twelve. 1214, okay? 1214. So just a heads up. You know, I ain't going to go too far off the deep end, but, you know, just viewer discretion, all right? Um, okay, where are we at? Uh, Abram took Sarai, his wife, and Lot, his nephew, and all their possessions that they had acquired and the people that they acquired in Haran. Okay, now when they say the people that they acquired, one of the things that the liberals are going to do is they're going to jump up and down about slavery. Hey, when they acquired these people. Okay, now the commandment of God is you can't kidnap a person and force them into slavery. You can't keep them for yourselves and you can't sell them. This is punishable by death. Hey, this, this Bible lets us know that very clearly. So when he acquired these people, they were either uh, people who sold themselves into slavery hey, or servitude. You know, they volunteered it. You know, this is one of the ways that they can, you know, it's like, look, man, I just want room and board. I'll do what you need. And it's, that, that's, that's how they survive. That's how they could survive. Uh, you may have had, uh, it could have been, uh, sometimes slavery is acquired by spoils of war. When you have, uh, like, say, for instance, you'll see, like, when God has the Israelites, you know, go and, and ride against another nation. Because these were very wicked and corrupt people. And oppression was part of their, their, uh, uh, their culture. So God's like, look, man, if you do that to your people, I'll have it done to you. I'll, I'll come and I'll, I'll, I'll wipe you out. I'll have you wiped out. Right. And then I'll, have, I'll I'll end up having and I'll take some of, I'll take some of yours for slaves. Eh? But they're spoils of war. They're not kidnapped. Eh? It's done to them. It's like it's like a, it's like a flip back of justice, that kind of thing. 
Uh, so long story short, we're not talking about uh, 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 we're not talking about forced slavery or kidnapping. All right. So now we got um, let's see. And they left acquired in Haran, and they left to go to the land of Canaan, and they entered the land of Canaan. Hey, Abram passed through the land as far as the place of Shechem, as far as Morah's big tree. The Canaanites were in the land then. Hey, uh, so they're still, they're still in, 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 it's within the same territory, just you know, a little bit further down the map. Um, then Adonai appeared to Abram. Uh, let's see. Appeared to Abram. Woo! And said... I will give this land to your seed. So there he built an altar to Adonai who had appeared to him. From there he moved to the mountain to the east of Bethel and erected his tent with Bethel to the west and I to the east. There he built an altar to Adonai and called on the name of Adonai. So Abraham, so Abram, sorry, kept on journeying southward. All right. Huh? Real quick, just a... Uh... Take a look at this one reach. Like I said, man, this is all. Okay, I see somebody saying they're only getting pieces of this. How you guys holding up? Is am I still there? Will somebody want to send me a check? All right, Lisa says she sees me. Okay, good, good, good. Thank you, Lisa. All right. My, mine, keep on, mine keeps on freezing, so sorry if I have to keep stopping and checking, guys. I just want to make sure that I'm still on point with you. Okay, now, there was a famine in the land, so Abram went down to Egypt to live as an outsider there because the famine was severe in the land. Now, y'all, you guys might see that this is a foreshadowing. Yeah, you got Abram, outskirts or outsider in Egypt, and there's a famine going on. So this is like a picture of his grandkids' generation that's going to come up with, uh, um, you're going to have Joseph, right? Remember how Joseph is going to become uh, second to Pharaoh because he's going to save the world from this famine and stuff like that? Yeah, Jacob had to go to Egypt right? because of a famine. So you had Jacob, you know, who's going to have to go to Egypt. There's a famine in the land, and this is a precursor to that. Okay, so we got a pattern that's setting up here. Okay? Um, now, just as about to, uh, about to enter the land, just as he was about to enter Egypt, he said to Sarai, his wife, look here, check this out. Please, I know that you are a very attractive woman. Girl, you fine. I got me a fine wife, baby, right? You be looking good, girl. So, you know, when I go up into these cities, when I go on up in here, I need you to do me a favor. So when the Egyptians... Uh, Look, please, I know that you are an attractive woman. So when the Egyptians see you, they'll say this is his wife and they will kill me. But you, but, but say, okay, this is why, and they'll kill me, but you, they'll let live. Please say that you are my sister so that I'll be treated well for your sake and my life will be spared because of you. Okay, now here's the thing. Now some say that Abraham or Abram was a liar. Okay, this is not the worst. If Abraham, if Abram was a liar, this would not even this would not be the worst of what he's done. Okay, if he was a liar, it wouldn't be the worst thing. Okay, because actually the thing is, what he was telling the truth. Abraham's wife, Sarai, actually was his sister. <laughs> okay? Yeah. It was his sister. Half-sister, actually. We're going to study about that a little further down the line. Um, Sarai was his sister. Okay? It's just like I said in, in, uh, in, in the promo. It's like, look here, Abraham. You know, I know your wife is really good looking. She's hot. But it's still your sister, dude. You. Okay? Now... Now, notice that they're up there in age. Abraham's already 75. They're both senior citizens, right? They're both senior citizens, man. But Sarai obviously be looking good, boy. She got, she's the talk of the town. She is a super cougar, okay? She is, she is fine. I mean, she's, she is, it's like, um, 
She's a hewn stone house. Mm, 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 right? They didn't sing brick house, brick house back then. They didn't sing brick house. They said hewn stone. She's a hewn stone house. Uh, right? So they was talking about her. Because she was hot. Right? She was older. I mean, she was like freaking what? It was like what? Raquel Welch or something like that? Yeah. You know, she, you know, she may have been, you know, like, uh, you know, a uh, little, little older. But, hey, she was, she was looking good. Uh, so let's see. When Abraham came to Egypt, the Egyptians, so we're at 14. When Abram, when Abram came to Egypt, the Egyptians did see that the woman was beautiful. Indeed, Pharaoh's officials saw her and they raved about her to Pharaoh. It was like all of them saw it's like they started singing like I I I like baby got back. By Sir mix -a -Lot. It was like, all of us like, dang, turn around, stick it out. Even Pharaoh's man got shot. Baby got back. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Right? She was just looking good. Hey? So we have, Pharaoh, and then Pharaoh's like, oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. I got to have her. I got to have her. All right? So Pharaoh saw her, and they raved about her to Pharaoh. They raved about her. She was the talk of the town. Then the woman was taken into Pharaoh's house. But Abram was treated well for her sake. And he got sheep, he got cattle, male donkeys, male and female slaves, female donkeys and camels. Right? He got a, a zoo. Um, but Adonai struck Pharaoh. Oh, Pharaoh, you done messed up, man. You, you done messed up. Struck Pharaoh and his household with great plagues because of Sarai, Abram's wife, so Pharaoh called Abram and said, look here, man, what's wrong with you? Hey, why didn't you tell me she was your wife? Why did you say she is my sister so that I took her to be my wife? Now, here's your wife, man. Here, here's your girl. Take her and get your behind out of here. Then Pharaoh instructed men concerning him. And they expelled him. It's like, look, nobody, I don't want any of y'all to touch her, man. Y'all don't, don't, don't do nothing. You just get out. Just let them leave. Don't mess with them. Okay? And they expelled him with his wife and everything that belonged to him. Okay, now, I know this seems kind of messed up. Like, what, what, because you're going to see later that this is going to happen again. And God is going to appear to the king in a dream. Before the king touches Sarai, God's going to appear in a dream. Okay? And give him a vision. Say, look, man, don't you touch her. Don't you touch her. Hey, now it's like, why didn't God do that before? It's like, God, why are you having, why are you allowing um, Abraham, Abram to go into these cities? Uh, why are you going in there and uh, allowing this stuff to happen to Sarah and Abraham and then, and then coming out and then uh, uh, plaguing cities? Why are you doing that, God? That's, that seems kind of messed up. Okay, here's the deal. You will see, especially when, when Jesus comes, eh, and, and you really don't even have to, you know, see that. You can look, you know, through the Old Testament and see the same thing. Jesus, you got the body, right? God incarnate is going to come, and people still ain't going to get it. I mean, Jesus is going to be for a miracle after miracle, and people are going to be like, it's just going to go over their head. They're not going to get it, eh? Adam and Eve, born in paradise, they didn't get it. They let somebody come in and just sucker them out of their immortality. They just don't get it. Okay? So with Abram, Abram also had to learn a really hard lesson to become this, to really come into the fulfillment of being the, the one who is going to bless the nations. Abram had to go through some stuff to really understand who he was and what he's supposed to do. Okay? Now you notice that as, as we read further, and I'm saying this because y'all are familiar, a lot of y'all are familiar with the story. Hey, eh? Sarai was barren. Now, it wouldn't have done God any good because we know that it's like for some reason people don't get it when God is saying things to them. Hey, eh? it wouldn't have done God any good to tell Abram that, yeah, your, your wife is barren. He actually had to show him. Hey, eh? obviously, because they're going into these different cities and she's ending up having she's being basically married off or uh, becoming like a. a um, uh, intimate 
with these different men, but she never gets pregnant. Okay? So it had to be demonstrated. There's the demonstration, the proof. Abraham wasn't sterile. Abraham, Abraham, Abraham was, first, you know, he, he, he could have kids. Sarai couldn't. And this had to be made very apparent. Okay? It's not you, Abraham. Abram. It's, 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 it's Sarai. She's, she's having to sleep with different men. And she's not getting pregnant. This is, this is confirmed. It's valid. She is not, she is, she's barren. Okay? So now, it, this had to be shown to prove that Isaac was going to be a miracle child, right? So it was proven that she was barren. Not only was she barren, she, and then from there she goes past menopause. And not only does she go past menopause, she is significantly an older woman. But she's still hot because they still want her. She goes into different sounds. It's like she's still good looking. It's almost like you can't convince. It's like, dude, are you really an old lady? Are you can't really have kids no more? Really? Hey? So she's not getting pregnant. Hey? You got to know. It's Genesis 20, mm -hmm. uh, chapter 20, verse 13, where it's, it's, it establishes that when they got married, mm -hmm. Abraham, throughout the marriage, mm -hmm. anytime they would go into a town with a king or a leader, they right? would say that, you're my sister, you're my sister. Yes. Hey, so he's having, he's constantly saying that because he want you know he wants to live. Now, now guys, this this ultimately this is gonna this is gonna this is gonna of course cause some uh, toxicity uh, in their relationship. Uh, what? Hold on. Did we black out again? Just a quick check, really quick. Am I still rolling? I got an LOL, I got an eh, <laughs> I got an ew, trying to cover up all this, <laughs> but I just need a quick confirmation, am I still going? Nope, see you, okay, there's Lisa, that, Lisa, <laughs> Lisa's my, my awesome confirmer, hey, all right, thank you, Mike, thank you so much, hey, my, like I said, my computer be freezing up, I just want to check, so what were we saying? Now this is going to cause some toxicity, y'all. So let it be known that uh, you know when when you know when people be thinking that well the Bible uh, <coughs> condones incest and the Bible condones polygamy and stuff like that. No, it doesn't. This stuff don't turn out very good. It's late. It's like you'll see it happen. These things happen, and then you see the moral of the story. It doesn't turn out good. They end up having a pretty you know messed up relationship. But I'm going to give you guys a foreshadowing. A, of of uh, and we're gonna and you're gonna see it as we get there, and, and we'll close up with this. Uh, uh, we'll close up with this one thought. Um, just like I told y'all, Sarah had to go these go through these things, and Abraham had to watch. He had to witness his wife. This is his wife, right? Um, being passed around to different men, and he had to witness. And he had it had to come become very apparent to him that she's barren. Which means that the child that you're going to have is a miracle child, Abraham. Hey, it's going to be a miracle child. Don't try to jump the, jump the gun hey, and, and, and go into a different woman and try to have a kid. You shouldn't have done that. You should have just trusted God when he tells you, look, you're going to have a son. It's going to be a miracle kid. Hey, the seed is only supposed to come from you. She's been barren because she's not supposed to bear kids to anybody else. And you should have just trusted me. You never had to pass around your wife, dude. Never had to do that. You were supposed to trust me the whole time. So God demonstrates over and it's like, dude, why didn't you just trust me? Did you, you, you got to live with that now, man. You got to live with that. You should have just trusted me. And now you got Ishmael. Hey, later on, it ends up with Ishmael. Now, Abra now Abraham, and we're going to talk about this again when we get there. Hey, Abraham, we see the faith of Abraham when he has to go and sacrifice Isaac and people be oh God is so cruel he's just gonna tell he's gonna out of the blue tell Abraham to, to to take his wife to take his son up on the hill and sacrifice him well we all know the story God did not allow Abraham to sacrifice his kid and it's not like something that God did out of the blue Abraham has been primed for this the whole time hey Abraham had to learn hard lessons dude you should have just listened you should have just trusted God. Had you trusted God, you wouldn't have had to tell Sarah, hey, just tell me you're my sister, okay? You wouldn't have had to done that and watch her get passed around if you had trusted God. 
If you had trusted God, you would not have had to uh, uh, father another father uh, Ishmael by another woman and ultimately have to end up having him sent out. Abraham had already sacrificed a son. He was he, he took Hagar as a wife. Hey, okay? so and had Ishmael with them. And ultimately, Sarah said, you're going to send them out, get them out of here. And Abraham knows that they will die in the desert. So Abraham, he already sacrificed Ishmael for all intents and purposes. But God told him, I will make a great nation out of him. So Abraham had to trust that Ishmael was going to be okay. And be blessed. And be blessed and become a blessed nation. You're Arabs, right? And are the Arabs not a, a big and great nation? Hey, eh? we may not appreciate the, the religion that came through the Arabs. Hey, eh? but the Arabs are still a great nation. Hey, eh? they're people. We don't have a problem with the people. Ideology, that's something else. Eh? So now Abraham had to hold on to that. He had to trust. Because the bottom line is, if Hagar and Ishmael are sent away from their camp, they're going to die. Eh? But Abraham had to trust that God is going to look after them. So this thing about Abraham being made to sacrifice Isaac out of blue, this wasn't no surprise to Abraham. Abraham had been prepped for a long time for this. Abraham finally learned. He learned after a long time. It's like, dude, I, I just need to trust God. I just need to trust him. Okay? So the, 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 the final thing was Abraham. Okay. We've, we've, done, you, this, we've, done, we've gone through this before, man. This is just like training. Just like training. You've gone through this. You've already sent out Ishmael. I told you it's going to be okay. You trust that, right? Okay. Now I want you to take Isaac up to the hill and sacrifice. This didn't come to him out of the blue. And Abraham said, word, hold up right here. Me and my son, we gonna go up this hill and we will be right back. Because Abraham knew that God wasn't gonna make him sacrifice his son. Eh? One way or another, or, or if anything, he would bring his son back to him. But he knew that he was gonna come back down that hill with his son, because he'd been prepped for that. And he listened and he remembered. And, through the, and, and guys, the Bible has been doing that with us all along. You've got to remember what it is that you read. It's like, wait, God has a pattern here. He demonstrates. He doesn't just do something and, and not, and without showing that he's done it before. Okay? So uh, we, that's where we just we trust God. We trust in him. All right, y'all. That's what I got for y'all today. What y'all got for me? Um, <laughs> Any questions? Me? Any questions? <laughs> Comments. I noticed Matthew Harvesty and Darla Gardner mm. counting your A's and E H A's and A's. Is that what that was? <laughs> eh? Oh, is, is that what? Because I, I think I'd be saying okay, but is, it, is that what it sounds like when I do it? Eh? eh? Oh, I, I guess I got a new thing now. Instead of saying right, drink. <laughs> right, you guys remember? So now it says hey. <laughs> well, I guess I guess that's one good way to know that y'all be paying attention, man. <laughs> Tim Clear says, you have reawakened my faith. You help me understand better. Oh, my dude. Who's that? Tim what? Clear. Tim Clear. Blessings to you, man. That's what I'm talking about. That's a, this, it's a party now. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Christian Catone, she always joins us. Say hi. What's up, Christian? What's that? Was it Christian Catone? Yes. Catone. That sounds like French or something. <laughs> All right. And bless and thank you guys for showing up. Anybody who was who was at YouTube, and I, I hope you guys found your way here. Um, geez, man, it's like it's it's so hard to keep a stable connection. You know, it's I guess these live feeds. You know, maybe I just I'm I'm gonna have to bite the bullet and spend the money and get like a higher internet connection. But you know, uh, if you want to help me out by leaving a tip for the trip, uh, you know, I'm not trying to solicit or anything. But you know, the message is free and delivered. But delivering it ain't. You know, so if you guys want to help me out with that. You know, that would be most appreciated. You know, you know, the Internet is trying to shut me down. You know, you know that, right? Facebook hardly lets me reach a lot of y'all. YouTube definitely ain't let me reach a lot of y'all. Google ain't let me reach a lot of y'all. So they're really trying to they're really trying to put their boot on the neck of a brother. You it sound, like, <clears throat> sound like a little thing called discrimination or anything like that. But, you know, I, I'm, I'm not I'm not one of them litigious types. So you ain't got to be afraid of me. Internet overlords, you know, I ain't, I'm, I'm not that way. I'd rather put my energy into promoting the gospel than to try to, you know, uh, come after y'all. But, you know, y'all are cowards and hypocrites. Yeah. You know, trying to shut a little brother down. 
That's what you're doing. That's what you're doing. And then you have some who will be like, they know they're trying to shut down Christians and conservatives. Yeah, I understand that, but I'm a black Christian conservative. You know, I don't play the race card. I'm just calling them out for their hypocrisy. They'd be like, oh, black lives matter, black lives matter. Well, if black lives matter, then it shouldn't matter if I'm a Christian or conservative. The only thing that's important is that I'm black and you're getting in my way. <laughs> All right? Against your own narrative, against your own so-called virtues, you're in my way. Hey, black lives do not matter to you. Yeah. All right? <laughs> Straight up, straight up. And bottom line is, all lives matter. Can amen. I get an amen? amen? Can I get a witness? I wish I could tell you more comments, but <clears throat> my Wi-Fi is so bad that my uh, computer's broken. You know, I, pro I, pro I probably should have used my hotspot. I'll learn, I'll learn. I, th I thought I could trust it, but no. All right. Say hi to Watson Prunia. He's, he's, oh. He put up your flood chronicles on the, in the Nice, Watson. Thank you, brother. Hey, I'm glad you're here, man. Now's a party, all right? It's been a party. Now's a part party party. Uh, it's been a party. Uh, then you, and I saw somebody, uh, Zoe's army going to fight back. Hey, in his service, let's do it, right? Right? Let's take, let's take Cyber Canaan. Yes. Yes. Burp. <laughs> Coffee burp. Coffee burp. All right. Okay, y'all. You guys enjoy the rest of your Thursday. Thank you for hanging out with me. We'll, I'll, <laughs> thank you for bearing with me as I, as I always have these, like, connection problems. You know, you know, the devil don't want y'all to hear what's, you know, you know, you know, he don't want you to, he don't want us doing this. Right? 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 He's the punk of the power of the air. I mean the prince of the, <laughs> prince of the power of the air. Mm. All right. See you guys later. Good night. Good night. Dude, I'm trying, I'm trying to use my cursor to cut off my phone instead of like <laughs> on, my, on my laptop. You, you, you guys know I'm clumsy. Right?